Hi everybody, Mrs. Drake here. Today we're going to be talking about scales. So fifth graders, find your scale paper. This is the flute one, but it should look like something like this. And scales are so important to musicians because bits of scales are used in music all the time. So if you have scales mastered, it will really help in all of the music that you're going to play in your life. So for fifth grade, I ask you to do five major scales in the chromatic scale on this sheet. And major scales, um, there's all different types of scales. Um, major, minor, there's modal scales. But on the sheet, it's five major scales and a scale that's called the chromatic scale. All right, so let's look at the major scales. The big thing on a scale is the key signature. You've got to look at the key signature and know the key signature for the scale to sound correct. Um, it's very, very important to know the key signature. Um, the scale, major scales have the pattern of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Those are solfege syllables. Um, and if they don't sound like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, it means you're probably playing one of the notes wrong. And I would bet it's probably because you didn't follow the key signature. So if you hear a note that doesn't sound right, it's probably because of the key signature. Um, so let me play you a scale. I'm going to play the scale, um, the B flat scale. And scales are always named for their first note. Major scales are named for their first note. So the first note is going to be a B flat. The lowest note of the scale and the highest notes of the scale is going to be B flat. So as I play this to you, could you think of that Do, Re, Mi and see that um, it does sound like that Do, Re, Mi that I was singing a few seconds ago. <laughs> So that was a B flat scale because I started and ended on B flat. Um, I'm going to purposely play a wrong note. I'm going to play the B flat scale is supposed to have B flat and E flat, but I'm going to add, I'm going to play E natural, and you'll hear that that makes the scale sound wrong. Listen to this. This is a B flat scale with a wrong note. <laughs> Maybe your ears were clever enough to hear that wrong note. Now I'm going to play it right. That was with the correct key signature. All right, I'm going to switch to a different scale, and I'm going to play it correctly. Um, but you'll still hear the Do, Re, Mi sound. Even though this one's going to be lower, it's going to have a lower tone to it. It's a G scale. It has a different key signature. But still feel it has that Do, Re, Mi sound to it. I'm going to play it again. So practice all those scales, those five major scales that are on your sheet. Really try to get them mastered. Really pay attention to the key signature. Now I'm going to switch to the chromatic scale. The chromatic scale does not have a key signature because it plays every single note. Um, and on the chromatic scale, um, you could tell you could play any chromatic scale, but look at what the first note is that I wrote on your paper. And I'm looking at the flute one. The very first note for the flute people is A sharp. And what that means is the first note is A sharp, the lowest note, and it's going to go to the highest note is going to be A sharp. So A sharp to A sharp. But what makes a chromatic scale different is it hits every single note in between those. So if you imagine a piano, it means it would hit every white key, black key, white key, all in a row. It doesn't skip any of them. And that's what makes a chromatic scale. So um, let me play this A sharp chromatic scale for you. Can you see, first of all, there's more notes? And it doesn't have that Do, Re, Mi sound like the, do, like the major scales did. It has more of like a slippery sound to it because it hits every single note. So if you have a piano or a keyboard or the bells at your house, try it. Pick a starting note and a, a lowest note and a highest note. Make it be the same letter and hit every single key in between and it creates a chromatic scale. Okay, so chromatic scales don't have a key signature because they use all of the sharps and all of the flats. Now, look at your paper. On the way up the scale, they call them by their sharp names. And on the way down the scale, they call them by their flat names. That is the tradition of a chromatic scale. And 
um, as you look at the paper, there may be some of the notes that you aren't familiar with. For example, on this flute plit paper, the very first note is A sharp. We have like, I don't know if we've ever even used that note. A sharp is exactly the same finger position as B flat. A sharp is exactly the same finger position as B flat. All right, listen to this. Every single flat has an identical twin that's a sharp. So far in your life, we might have always called it, like for the flutes, by their flat name. We've always called, always called him B-flat. But he could also be called A-sharp. If you picture a piano, one of the white keys is A and one of the white keys is B, and there's a black key in between it, that black key could be called B-flat or you could call it A-sharp. So the white key is the naturals, like the white key A, the white key B next to it, the black key in between it could be called B flat or you could call it A sharp. So that means every single sharp note has an identical twin that is a flat note. As you look through your chromatic scale and if you come to a note that you don't know, look at the notes that's right before it and right after it. That might help you figure out the finger position. Or remember, look in the very last page of the back cover of your book. There's a really nice finger chart and it shows you which sharp notes match which flat notes. So here's a copy of the flute's very last page. And um, so for example, let me find it here. There's that A sharp B flat that I was talking about, that A sharp B flat that I was talking about. It shows it as both, but if you notice the finger position is the same. B flat and A sharp are exactly the same. Let me give you another one. F sharp, F sharp. A lot of you have played tons of F sharps. What do you suppose the flat name is that goes with F sharp? Okay, so think of sharps. Sharps always go higher. So what's the next note past F? What's the next note higher than F? It's G. So F sharp is exactly the same finger position as G flat. So F sharp is equal to G flat. Let me do another one. Flats always go down. Think of a flat tire. So E flat. So you want to think of going down from E. What's a note down from E? D. So E flat is exactly the same finger position as D sharp. Okay, that will help you with the chromatic scale. So good luck with your scales, everybody.